This is part two of the dialogue system for Unity Love-Hate Quest Machine Integration video tutorial series. In part one, we set up the scene and a basic conversation. Now let's create a quest. Inspect your quest database and add a new quest. Call it Kill Orc. Set the title that will be shown in UIs. In the main quest properties, we'll set up the journal text and HUD text to begin with the quest's title. Next, add a condition node that waits for the player to kill the orc. We'll set this node's ID to kill orc. As a side note, if you don't want to use string literals, you can always create string assets or use text tables. We'll fill in journal text and HUD text, but note that we're not adding dialog text here. This is because we'll handle dialog in the dialog system. And we'll set the conditions to listen for a message that the orc prefabs are already configured to send because we started with Quest Machine's demo scene. Now add a return to NPC node. I'm going to add a message condition to demonstrate the quest reference window, but we're not actually going to use this condition. Instead, the dialogue system conversation will control the state of this node. When a quest uses quest machine dialogue instead of a dialogue system conversation, it sends messages that your quest's conditions can listen for. Finally, we'll add a success node at the end. Let's add some journal and HUD text to the return node to remind the player what to do when the quest is in this state. We'll finish the quest by adding some success state text. Click on the Quest Machine Editor's canvas to view the main quest properties. If you wanted the quest to start a dialogue system conversation, you could add a dialogue system conversation quest content. This is covered in Quest Machine's other dialogue system integration video. In this tutorial, we're going the other way and starting a conversation that controls quests. So let's write that conversation. We'll start by blocking out the conversation tree. We'll need text to show when offering the quest, when the quest is active, and when the player can turn in the quest.
create a quest stub that matches our quest machine quest. This will make it easier to specify it in drop-down menus. Here you can see that it matches the quest machine quest ID. We'll use the integration's Lua functions to check if the quest can be offered. The functions are available in the Custom submenu and are documented in the integration's PDF file. To offer the quest, we'll make sure the player doesn't already have it. Then we'll use GiveQuest to give the quest to the player. Make sure to specify the quest giver in the dropdown. We'll also configure this node to show an alert. In the next branch, we'll check if the quest is active and if the kill orc condition node is active. In the next branch, we'll check if the player is ready to turn in the quest. If so, we'll set the quest to success. Also remember to set the return node to success. Now we just need to assign the quest to the villager and give it a try. Before we play, let's move the quest editor someplace where we can see it. And there we go, quest complete. But there's one issue with our setup. I'm going to play through the quest again. At this point, we turn in and complete the quest. But if we talk again, the conversation offers the quest again. This is because by default, quest journals do not remember completed quests. So let's tell the journal to remember completed quests. So now that we're remembering completed quests, let's make sure the conversation uses that last branch. In this video, we set up a quest machine quest to be controlled by a dialogue system conversation. In the next video, we'll incorporate love-hate.